Hi guys. How are you doing? I'm going to eat until like, people start coming on. This is your daily tarot card reading from Born Without Boundaries. Um, welcome. If you're watching this on Astrology Motivation, don't forget to subscribe and like this video and share this video. Um, even subscribe to the playlist because I'm going to post them Monday through Friday. And if you want to join me live, I'm live now. I'm always live on Instagram, born underscore without underscore boundaries. I will not eat through the reading. I'm just eating now because nobody's here yet. <laughs> Got all my cards on the table. Mmm, Cancer. You're gonna want, you're gonna, you're gonna really want to see your video. <laughs> cancer, Virgo, Leo. You're up. You're live. You're wonderful and beautiful. What's up, babe? All right. I'm putting the crackers away, I promise. Thank you for joining, BXX. Thank you so much for joining. What's up? Third Eye Pharaoh. I have to, like, squint to see these. What's up, guys? Gabriel, Formless... Happy Friday, TGIF, Divine Black Beauty. Go, girl. Um, thank you for joining. Um, happy Friday to you, too. I know, TGIF. Whew. Monday through Friday, I, like, Monday through Thursday is the bulk of my work because um, the Zodiac videos and the personal readings are heavy lifts. Friday, I get to, like, sit back. I see you, babes. Um, Friday I get to sit back and, um, kind of do more, um, quiet work. I prepare the astrology motivation. I've already prepared the first few days. So what I'm going to go back and do, I got to finish up the week and then that will debut early tomorrow morning, the weekly astrology forecast. I've decided it does better on Saturday. Go figure. Nothing does well on Saturday, but it did really well. So, and it gives me a little more time to like catch my breath before I go into something else. And then of course I'm working on the next astrology motivation too. So that's some quiet work that I have to do. Maybe not today, but tomorrow. I'm always working on another piece of content. I got two channels going. So um, it's just, a, it's just, a, it's, it's awesome actually. Uh, thank you so much for subscribing. Uh, yeah, the uh, videos, uh, the videos this week were rough. Um, not rough, but like, like big, like big messages. Scorpio especially, Cancer was a big message too and Virgo was a huge message. I don't know where it even came from, but it, it, it came, 11-11, I love you so much, God. Can we say three things we're grateful for? I am so grateful for you guys. I'm so grateful for this channel. I'm so grateful for being able to have my own business and it working, thank you so much. I'm so grateful for my dog, for the good food I have to eat, for the plans with friends. I went roller skating last night. Thank God for that. It was the best. I felt like I was eight. It was the best. The best. Also, shout out to Darlene, who owns and operates South Paul Grooming. If you love your dog and you live in the North County, San Diego area, you got to bring it to South Paul Grooming because she is the best. Little plug, a little bit of a plug for my girl. We were, we were roller skating yesterday. It was awesome. It was like being a kid in the 70s again. Man, it was like, it was awesome. <laughs> this is so cool. Um, what are you doing? Let's get into the uh, Witch's Date Book. I do have a little bit of a bitch and moan session. Um... I wanted to address, I've been following this, you know, this Prince Harry and Meghan Markle thing, and I'm actually not trying to blast them, um, but I got to make comments on this because it's really near and dear to my heart. I struggle with mental illness myself, and um, mental health is extremely important to me. I lost somebody very important to me very recently because of mental health issues, <clears throat> and I don't think that it's okay for celebrities to be playing around with mental health um, to get attention for themselves or to sell their reality shows. 
Um, I know the intent is actually good, especially with Oprah and Prince Harry, to like talk about what they went through. And they, I think they think they're building awareness, but I am concerned because Oprah has this new thing with Prince Harry on Apple TV. And, and, I, and I haven't watched the whole thing because I don't have Apple TV, but in the excerpts that they have from it, it's a bunch of celebrities talking about their issues, but that's not actually what helps. You have to get real help with a real therapist. And I hope that somewhere in those programs, they have doctors and clinicians in interrupting because two people with mental illnesses talking is just two people making each other sicker. And that's the truth. That's the truth. That is why programs like AA, and God bless you if you're in AA, but it has such a failure rate. It has such a high rate of failure. And the reason why we haven't addressed this is because, let's face it, we just don't give a shit about our addicts. And we'd rather throw them into AA and say, hey, take care of yourselves, than actually develop real intervention programs and behavior modification strategies that heal. And, um, and that's why everybody's just thrown into AA. Go to AA, go to AA, go to AA. When you look at the history of AA, the data speaks for itself. There's only a 4% rate of success. That means it's not a successful treatment, okay? So we know that support groups can support your journey, but we also know from decades worth of data that you must have intervention, clinical intervention leading you back to health, a doctor's intervention. And as, and listen, once upon a time, I wouldn't have trusted doctors with mental health either. Electric shock, electric shock treatment and throwing you and locking you away in a straitjacket. That's how people used to handle mental health. And that's why things like AA were a more humane way of dealing with it but it's not all we need and we have to go beyond that. And two people sitting down to talk about their mental illnesses is literally just two people enabling each other's mental illnesses. You have to have a clinician in there to help guide them back and point out that you're actually not helping yourself. You're still making decisions that are harming your life. And um, I can't help but think that that's what these episodes are. And so I have red flags all over the place and I really, even if I have to subscribe to Apple TV, I want to watch and start pointing out frame by frame where the incorrect thinking is happening. Where, like, In other words, when you have a mental illness, your mental illness does thinking for you. And, and stop. And you will not know it. You will not know it because you're not capable of knowing it. Because your behavior and your psyche is, is injured. So that's why you need that objective perspective of somebody who's trained to break in and show you, you know that you're actually, the choice that you just made there is hurting you. It's doing exactly what you said you didn't want, but you wouldn't be able to see that with, if you have mental illness, you wouldn't know that, right? You wouldn't know that. And with Prince Harry, especially, he is constantly talking about my wife is threatened. My son is threatened. My mother was killed. And yet all he keeps doing is going to the press and talking to them and talking to them and talking to them and signing on for a reality show to make money by having private issues blasted. And it's like, that is a pro, I have to tell you right now, that is a product of his mental illness and his broken brain, not, it's, it's, a, it's like a product, it's like, a, it's like a, a child of both. So I think he is a really good person and he wants to do good but he's making decisions that actually harm him and are exact in, 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 in absolute contradiction to what he says he wants to do. And I don't think it's because he's manipulative or just wants to make a buck. I think it's because he is stuck in a trauma loop. And I said that early, early on. And I wish instead of us being spectacles, like using people with mental health issues as spectacles, and we've done it for years with reality television, I mean, honestly, y'all, why don't we just start doing public hangings and public executions again? You do know that once upon a time, people used to like go as like a, a, an outing to watch people being fried in the electric chair. 
People used to watch the gladiator games because they loved to see people and animals ripped apart limb by limb. Like we have this tendency in humanity to want to see people hurt themselves and to see people sick in front of us. And it's disgusting and it's sad, but media makes a shit ton of money from it. And I can't help but say, as this little person who only has three people watching me, I see this as an absolute, like, degradation for the mental health community, hurting us instead of helping us. And sick people, including Oprah, Oprah was 100% traumatized as a little girl. If you, if you hear her stories, the trauma is horrific. And I don't think she's really helping either. I think she's stuck in a trauma loop too. And because these people can get attention, somehow they think they're doing a good thing. And really they're, what they're only, only what all they're doing is giving real psychologists videos to make examples of, to say, that's a broken thought. That's a broken thought. That's a decision you came to because of your trauma. That's an unhealthy conclusion. That's incorrect. I mean, it's not. It's like, it's like this phantasmic thinking. Like now, now Harry is saying things like, my mother was a victim of racism too. And she, cause she was dating a Dodi Alfayed and I should have seen it. And it's like, no, all you're doing you're stuck in your trauma loop. That's not what was happening. Diana was always pursued by the paparazzi, whether she was with Prince Charles, whether she was with one, one of her white guys she was having an affair with, or whether she was with Dore Alfayette. It had nothing to do with his skin color. It had everything to do with the fact that she was paparazzi magnet and that she also made unhealthy, traumatized, trauma-induced decisions to invite the press into her life as if she could control the outcome. And Harry's doing the exact same thing. And that's why I think red fucking flags here, red fucking flags, because you think you can control. The press is really driven by the, the hunger of people. Remember paparazzi wouldn't have been chasing Diana if people who said they loved Diana didn't buy pictures, didn't buy magazines with her picture in it or didn't like sit their asses in a, in, a, in a chair to watch interviews with her. You know what I'm saying? It's like you're forgetting that the people that say they love you also are really into watching you fall because it's entertainment for them. So it, that's just part of human nature. And so if you have a healthy brain, what you're gonna do is recognize all that and you're gonna be like, yeah, I'm not inviting any of the press into my life. I'm gonna stop doing interviews. I'm actually going to protect my family and let you know as little about me as possible because that's called privacy. That's called respecting myself. And that's called setting up a clear boundary of you're not allowed in here. But he's making these decisions, allowing so much of the press and podcasts and he thinks he has it all under control just like Diana did. And he does not. He's completely out of control. That's my take. There's a lot of red flags and I really wish people, cause I, I, I started studying behaviorism. I dropped out of my master's program. This, all of this is actually starting to inspire me to go back into my master's program because there's so much bad treatment of the mental health community in the public eye now. It's really just people with mental illness, illnesses being used as spectacles again. That's, that's really all it's translating to. And it's sad and disgusting and it needs to stop. So that being said, let's move on to um, Friday. Friday. Um, uh, I'm gonna show you guys the cards to show you, uh, yay, I've stopped talking about this crap again, <laughs> right? I've stopped talking about it. I'm gonna start shuffling now. Um, I'll actually put in like, it, I'll, like I think, I don't know how many minutes this has been, but I'll actually maybe put a timestamp when I upload this to YouTube. If you want to skip right to the reading, you can. Um, we have Friday, and this is the sun is going is it going to enter um, Libra at at night at 9:35 p.m. That's Eastern time, so you know that's about 6:35 p.m. out here. And the color of the day is coral. 
The moon is still in, in Virgo right now, which is probably why I am super heightened aware of health and the treatment of it. Because let's face it, that's Virgo energy. Um, and a lot of the Virgo reading was about that. A lot of the Virgo reading was picking up on that energy of what Virgos have ha really been going through during quarantine and how stressful and um, traumatic it must have been, especially for Vir people with heavy Virgo energy because Virgo energy is so naturally centered on, it's like their job to center on health and wellness and um, to be put in a vulnerable situation of not knowing what to do, getting mixed messages from the press about what to do, really intense. And I think especially, pe not just Virgo suns, but people with intense Virgo energy, Virgo moons, especially Virgo risings, or people with stelliums in Virgo, even if that doesn't include your sun sign, really, really, really probably should, I would say, go talk to somebody. Like literally, like, like literally work this out and give yourself what you need, which is um, um, healing because it's just been really stressful and traumatic. And as we start to come out of it, a lot of Virgos may be finding that they're not able to come out of it because they're sort of stuck in um, how much they've been traumatized by this. And, and um, it's just so important now to decide that you're, valuable enough and that you're worthy enough to go get yourself some extra help bump it up a little bit i'm just i'm, I'm talking from a place of concern and what i read in the cards yesterday so fyi um and like i said especially with the moon in virgo this could be impacting a lot of us so you know it's hard to heal let's face it let's it's hard to heal and it hurts to heal and that's why the painful aspects of healing sometimes feel like we're re-injuring ourselves and we stay away from it because we're like, I don't want to go back to the injury. And what we don't realize is we're denying ourselves healing because there is pain aspects in healing, right? And, and denying ourselves those aspects actually deny ourselves the ultimate long-term healing. But we're reacting that way because we equate the pain with the suffering and with the injury and we don't want to go back there. So it makes sense. But like I said, it's that broken brain making a decision that it thinks is right when it's actually hurting. And so there's just a lot of that going around right now. And I think this is the perfect time to talk about it. Um, let's go into what you're reading, guys. Um, Today is a very good day, I have to say. Uh, it's, a, it's a day of truth. It's a day of honesty. It's a day of openness. It's a day of, um, it's a day of possibility and potential. And with Saturn about to come into retrograde and Pluto already retrograding, the truth is coming out. And the truth may shock you because lots of times we placate and put paste over things and say, but look, I've done it right. So it must be the truth. That doesn't mean it's the truth. And there's no such thing as your truth. That's bullshit. There's no such thing. There's no such thing as personal truth. There's such thing as personal experience. There's such thing as personal perspective. There's such thing as um, 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 personal honesty. Honesty is what really personal truth is. It's telling your perspective without any kind of malicious intent behind it, just telling what you've experienced. But truth is actually higher and bigger than us all. Truth is something that stands outside of us and is we're all a part of it. You know, truth is more akin to God than it is to us. So yes, we're all a piece of it, but just think about that old Buddhist parable. We all have one perspective of the truth. We're all really blind folded, touching the elephant, describing what we feel. And we're so set on, well, this is it. This is the ultimate truth. When we're really only capable of experiencing part of it, right? None of them in that parable says we're touching, I'm touching an elephant, right? Well, they're all blind. One of them says I'm touching a tree trunk. One of them says I'm touching a snake. One of them says, oh, I'm touching a, 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 a broom or a, a paintbrush. The other says, I, I'm, I'm touching uh, whatever. Um, but none of them says I'm touching an elephant because 
all of them have li limited perspectives. They're all being honest. They're all telling their truth, but they're not actually piecing together the full story because they're not listening to each other, right? It's important. You got to talk to each other. You can't just talk to people who say the things you want to hear. You have to talk to people who are saying different things to get the whole perspective because human beings are not actually day-to-day -day accessing the full truth. You have to work really hard, meditate a lot, be in some serious spiritual alignment, work in there for years to actually have access to the truth, and that's what we call enlightenment. So let's stop dumbing that shit down, even with the spiritual community thinking, oh, it's my truth. Your truth is just you being honest about what you've experienced. Truth itself is something that's bigger than you, and you actually have to connect with others to connect with, okay? Just an FYI, because I think that in the spiritual community, that's been sort of bastardized as well. So let's get on to, let's get on to tarot. Today is a very good day. And I just saw this was the card that was facing me and it's the strength card, but it's the side of the vice versa deck that reminds us you know, we have to face the devil itself. We have to face fear itself and that we have the strength to do it now. We really do, we're capable of it. So the first card out is divorce. Divorce, unhappiness, the destruction of a, a, a house or a household, that's the first card out. Uh, and then we have clarity, um, counsel, objectivity, being able to look at something from an objective perspective and see it clearly without, not without considering emotion, because the Queen of Swords is not without emotion, but she is not controlled by emotion. She is enabled by emotion, and then she can objectively work through it. She's somebody of significant self-control. And then we have happiness and abundance and getting everything we wish. After being able to sit back and look at something that hurt us, um, you know, break up uh, something that we went through, looking at it objectively, and then seeing this nine of cups is, you know, your dreams, your wishes coming true after we've been able to be objective about it. Then we have defeat here, which is the five of swords. But you know what it is? It's beautiful. It's walking away from, you know what? Somebody else won. You know what? Being able to say, I lost that one but I don't have to keep myself in the position of, in the striking distance of somebody with a shit ton of swords. I'm gonna carry myself away from this defeat with what I have, which is my life. Even though I was defeated doesn't mean I'm not still alive. Um, so there you have justice. And this is, I'll tell you, this is the Saturnian in retrograde energy. This is a hardcore saying justice is about to be served. And I think a lot of people are going to be really surprised by the decisions that are made because they think they got it all. They think that they, they know it all. They think that they've done it all. They think they're doing the right thing. You know, <clears throat> the path to hell is paved by good intentions. Um, but this is justice in its harshest form. It doesn't give a shit. It doesn't care. It just wants balance because balance has been so compromised, it's gonna do anything to get things back into balance. And that's the energy and holy shit, honey baby boo child, the central energy is the dark moon. Now this is the moon card and it's still upright, which means we are facing our fears, but this is also dark moon style. So we are facing our shadow self. We are facing those aspects of ourselves that do us harm and hurt others. We are going to be forced to see how we are part of our own problem. That's, that's, the, that's the reading so far. Okay. Yep. So there are opportunities and actions that maybe we haven't taken, things we haven't done, things we haven't even um, addressed, and they're gonna be flung at us. Like bratty children, why didn't you give attention to me? And that's the thing is like, you think you've done it all, but your shadow side is gonna come up and say, you haven't done shit. 
Look at all these failings. Failings because they're opportunities that you had to do things right and you didn't. And this is when it comes for you. This is when. Okay. And I'm not saying it's doom and gloom for everybody, but all of us are going to eat a little crow in the next few days. I'm just letting you know. And then we have the tower. Shocking, right? People are like, shocking, shocking. We can't avoid it now is what I'm saying. So everybody just say your prayers. Tell everybody how much you love them. And we can't avoid it now. Um, this, is, this is energy that we've created. And so we will have to live in it and experience it. But look at this. There's hope on the horizon. Because we are, this is, we are going to get a chance to start fresh. Not to start over. That's not what the fool is about. The fool is about going in a different direction. Trying something you never did before. Because, hello, think about what I said, channeled message, trauma brain, you were making decisions based on unhealthy thoughts. So now you get it and you can make different decisions. And the fool is really about starting fresh, starting new, not starting over, but the past is gone. And now the direction is completely different. That's what the fool is about really tremendous energy and look at look at this a new love a new connectivity a new hope a new chance a fresh start fresh and new and beautiful and then six of cups feeling at home feeling comforted feeling loved just like we did it's almost like a second childhood going back and being able to heal the abused child now means that that abused child can actually have a healthy life starting from that point and giving them what they deserved type of energy but also six of cups could literally mean there's an offer coming in of love and a lot is coming back from the past but it's not okay let me let me explain what's happening now is not your ex coming back What's happening now is an opportunity that was never able to get through to you finally arriving. It's like, that's why if you watch yesterday's videos, message in a bottle kept coming up because message in a bottle is a card from this deck that says it's been in transit for God knows how long the message was written for you. It's just now arriving. And that's the energy of Saturn retrograde and especially Pluto retrograde is what was truth and what was meant to be is coming up. It's finally arriving. It's not that it wasn't intended for you. It's that because humans are linear, we only think of what we've experienced, right? And we think, oh, we know the truth because of our limited personal experiences. That's just ignorance, right? Um, that's ignorance. Um, so what we have to do is we have to... Um, um, realize or it's hard for us to realize um that those things were always meant for us right a lot of us have basically resigned ourselves to give up just give up on it it's like it's never gonna happen right just give up on it um maybe it wasn't really meant for you know talking yourself out of what your heart is telling you no 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 it's true you're really supposed to have this but you start denying your heart and then other problems come because you start denying your heart and what this is bringing us back to our heart space and it's going to help us. It's really the cosmos wanting to help us come back from the hurt and say, we know it's taken too long. There have been miscalculations and fuck ups on large scale that has harmed a lot of you. And now what we're going to do is we're going to come back and show you that, you know what? It was always intended, intentional, intended for you to be loved. It was always intended for you to have healthy relationships. It was always intended for you to have this, that, and whatever, or know this, that, and the other. Um, it just took a while to get here. So this is a message of love that has actually been trying to reach you for years. Not just love romance. I'm talking higher love, babies. Okay. Now, some of you, it may come to you in the form of romance. Some of you, it may come to you in a form of career advancement, whatever. It's love. 
It's like love is finally breaking through and it's, it's wanted you. It's almost been chasing you. It couldn't find you. Think about like almost like that where karmically it's all because karma is not punishment. That's not what it is. We use karma in the wrong way all the time. Karma is not punishment. Karma is experiencing the energy you created. Okay, that you mean it means you have control over your karma. <laughs> like that's what it does. That's what it means, right? It doesn't mean other bad things won't happen to you. But it means that you like but it means that you really do have a lot to say about the energy that you experience. Not everything, um but but a lot. And and so karma is the ultimate justice, the ultimate balancer. Karma don't give a fuck. And that's why poor baby boo, she's always called a bitch. Every, don't we always hate on people who just speak the truth, right? But that's what karma is. Karma is the ultimate balancer. She's, the, she, she's not truth herself, but she is sort of the executioner of truth. She is the defender of truth. She is the one that says we veered off way too much. What we're going to do is we're going to get back into balance. Um, it's almost like she's the universe's uh, Arch Michael, Archangel Michael, like she's their warrior. She's the one that says, I'm putting everything back. That's what karma does. She puts everything back into balance. And a lot of times we imbalance ourselves because we're, we think we're doing the right thing or we're doing something that's we've convinced ourselves is right because it's based on popular belief, etc., etc. And we all know from experience now that that is just not the case, right? And, and the further we get from listening to our heart is uh, the further we get from being in balance. Because um, that is truth. There is a part of us that has access to uh, cosmic truth. And that is our heart. And um, it, it's, it's kind of sad how very little we listen to it. Because we mistake our heart for our ego and our desires and our lusts. And that's not what our heart, I mean, I know the heart is an organ. I'm talking about it more as a chakra. That's not what, the, what I'm, the heart space is. The heart space is almost like the megaphone for God, which is your soul, inside of you. It's like it's where it speaks. And it's do we listen to it or don't we? You know, because um, it's hard. It's challenging. Um, but it's also why we're human and, and why we learn. So mistakes and pain are a part of our process. But they're all meant to teach us to get back to our heart space, not to get further from it. Um, so this is about some beautiful stuff happening and an assist, I will say, a cosmic assist that says, see, we're bringing you this beauty because we want you to know you always, you were always loved. You always deserved it. But it just... <laughs> We all got fucked up, man. It, we all got thrown off. There's a lot of healing that's happening now. And like I said, pain is a dynamic of healing. And we got to be super cautious. And I think that's why we also got to be have somebody who's like a counselor, who has that objectivity to sit, up, sit back and say, this, this pain is not re-injury. This pain is actually healing. You know, like, like anybody ever went through PT, physical therapy, <laughs> that shit can be painful. But it's also pain that is associated with healing because it's changing. It's, it's making adjustments, physical adjustments, and that can be rough. But it's also necessary to get things back into alignment. And so what we're going to be experiencing now is realignment. And honestly, you could be experiencing this right through October of this year. This is like, this is just the start. Okay, so FYI. Um, let's get into the rest of the cards because we have a shit ton more of this reading to go. I gotta say thank you guys so much for humoring my, um, <laughs> my rants. You know, I talk to you about things that are important to me. Um, and on, on Instagram, I actually open up a lot more about me personally. So, I don't know. I don't know if I'll, I'll include that in the YouTube video, but whatever. I'm hungry. Friday is my cheat day. <laughs> it's my favorite day. <laughs> Work through your fears. Oh, I love you so much, God. 
And it's a Scorpio. It's Scorpio. I gotta point something out to you. <coughs> I'll point something out to you. <laughs> you need to know this. The day that Saturn <coughs> goes retrograde is Sunday the 23rd. Is also the day the moon enters Scorpio. Push. Face your fears. Face your fears. You must. Work through them. This is the way to happiness. And then we have confidence is your key to success. Believe in yourself. Leo, heart chakra. Remember your heart. Remember you're loved. Right? Remember you're connected. Virgo, you are good enough. Healing. Getting back to healing. Having the confidence to give yourself what you need to actually heal. Don't let your past hold you back. I love you so much, God. This is Sagittarius energy. The full moon lunar eclipse is happening in Sagittarius. Sagittarius is where your south node is right now. Don't let your past hold you back, which is trauma. And then you're very close to achieving your goal because the universe wants you. It's conspiring in your favor. And it sees that you're, you're hurting yourself. You're making bad choices. I'm going to show you that you are so that you can actually grab a hold of what I prepared for you, which is beautiful. So beautiful. That says it right there, man. That says it right there. I'm, I'm going to hold them all up for you. Because that just blew me away. That just blew me away. You see them? That just blew me away. Face your fears. Confidence is your key to success. You are good enough. Hey, Trey. My sister's on, guys. Um, uh, don't let your past hold you back. And you're very close to achieving your goals. Oh, I have been plugging. Um, my sister is a poet and a writer, and she's been on this website. So I've been plugging her poetry in my um, um, in my lives. So please, y'all, go and um, enjoy. Enjoy what she wrote. She's really talented. And also vote for her. You don't have to pay for anything. But it's, a, it's like a contest, you know, more views you get, the more, cl the more closer you are to getting a, a prize or paid. So it's, it's hard for young writers, not young, but new writers to like get published. And this is a really good outlet for them. Um, I've been posting it. It's posted to my Facebook page, it's posted to my Twitter feed, and it's posted here. Um, also just go and enjoy what she writes because it's really good. Um, sweets indulgences what's good for you what's bad for you now we know that sweets are not always bad for you sometimes they're part of just celebration celebration and celebrating life but this is sort of gluttony and overindulgence so what are you doing to yourself to hurt yourself as we talk about sweets i love you angels and you know that i'm thinking about donuts and because i know as silly as it sounds food is one of my triggers uh and this is my cheat day <laughs> So, um, anyway, maybe this is a little bit of a per personal message for me, but I also think this is, um, it's a good example. Let's not vilify what we love, uh, or, or what we enjoy. Let's not vilify pleasures because that's not what we're here for. We're here to have pleasure, but we're also not here to just have pleasure so this is one of the hardest things to keep in balance like how much pleasure and how much pain right there are actually two things that have to stay in balance um but sweets is also saying it's just like there is good stuff coming there is beautiful things happening there is celebration happening there is you know it's not all doom and gloom And then we have Dragonfly, which is about transformation. Live life to the fullest. And it is. But, but that's the point, man. 
You're not actually living your life to the fullest if your life is out of balance. You're actually, you're actually restricting yourself without knowing it. And that's what I was talking about, about making decisions that we think they're better for us, but they're actually like in direct contrast to what we really want, right? And it's, it's kind of like realizing that, like recognizing it. Because the universe wants us to be in real abundance, not this half-witted perspective of abundance that we get into because we just like repeat the same thing over and over and over again, you know? Um, and then Peacock, raise your standards. Raise your standards for what you think is good, right? Get onto those universal standards of, but I want balance in my life. I want health in my life. I want to listen to, I want God in my life. Whatever you envision God is. Or if, even if you don't believe in God, maybe you just health, wellness, you know? It's like raise your standards so that that is your ultimate indulgence. So that you're really experiencing all that life has to offer. Because that's really the biggest, the, that's really the biggest kind of reward and pleasure to be in enlightenment, you know, to be in constant connection with God and oneness and others. Like that's really the biggest reward. Um, peacock, so raise your standards. Uh, have, we, have we been dulling our standards? Have we, have we been settling for what's easy instead of what's, what's right and what's good? Think about that. You know, when I go and I reach for that cookie, I love cookies, that's true. But um, am I really looking for what that cookie can give me, that sugar rush, that sweetness, that yummy taste? Or am I looking for happiness? Am I looking for um, innocence? Like what, what am I really looking for when I, when I reach for that fifth cookie? You know what I'm saying? That's the conversation we gotta start having with ourselves. I am captivating. And yes, you are. You are very beautiful. And I think that that is, that is going to become very obvious. You know, I love this card because she is not somebody on a stage. She's not somebody even trying to get attention. She's just somebody who has attention. And she's just so beautiful because she's looking at herself. You know, she's not self-involved, but she's, she's introspective. You know, we become our most radiant when we focus on our own shit, not on our outward shit. Like what, what we focus on our own shit and own it, we be we radiate. That's what it is. It's also, people are watching you. You're captivating them. You're getting their attention because you don't want their attention. You don't need their attention. Yep. With all, with all these cards, what comes out? Everything is so in sync with this reading. Jade, wellness. The recovery of health and wellness is here. And I believe Virgo got this in their reading last night. So that's incredible energy. And then, um, appetite, apatite, progress, not perfection. Don't compare yourself to others or judge yourself. Instead, focus upon how far you've come and all that you've learned. And that is, of course, to give us strength to continue to move forward. And no, you know, we don't have to be perfect to be making progress. The perfection doesn't really exist. That's beautiful. Because that means that we're always inspired to keep trying and keep moving forward. Not out of stress, but out of a true curiosity and, and love of life. Spiritual path. Your true beliefs are becoming clearer to you which prompts you to make necessary life changes. Big impact on who we are, and it's beautiful. The inspiration you get, especially over these next, this next week, is to really show you, it's like your life, if you were questioning your life's purpose, it's almost gonna be like written on your forehead this week. That, that's what I'm saying. you guys look at that card new life I mean 
I, at this point, I'm stunned and I don't have anything to say. I think the cards are just speaking for themselves. It's a new life. It's not starting over. It's a brand new life. These are very important cards. These, for me, I feel are my highest wisdom, my wisest deck. And that's why I bought, wow. First of all, what have we been talking about? Health and wellness, what comes out? And that's why I'm gonna read from the book, The Secret Language of Light. Hi, good boobies. 23, 23 is my lucky number the day my son was born. You are love and you are loved. Let me read that again. You are love and you are loved. This image consists of your soul star Gaia, the soul of the earth, the soul of earth, the divine cleansing that is expanding the love of all. Honor your temple, your body, for it is the physical manifestation of your soul. In doing so, you honor Earth, for she is the physical manifestation of Gaia. So Gaia is the soul of Earth. Don't judge your environment or your body. Just be discerning about what you focus on and digest what feels helpful. Gaia knows how grateful you are because you are here. She wants to remind you that worthless... I'm sorry. She wants to... To remind you that worthiness and ease are your birthright. You are creating beauty, intimacy, and deeper connections with Gaia and your higher self just by playing on earth. Feel Gaia's loving embrace everywhere, in nature, a backyard, a pot plant, or your mind's eye. If there is something you want to change about you or Gaia's body, Connect with your soul and be inspired by a new path that will lead you to your desire. On this planet, all is forever moving into more and more love. It's such a great card to remind us how our soul and our body aren't separate entities. They're always working together. They're in communion. And, 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 the earth has a soul too. It's a living, breathing organism. I remember this argument I had with my son about whether or not earth is an actual individual. And I absolutely know it is. And he was arguing with me. Um, but the earth has a soul. It's an, it's an entity. It's an individual. And, it's a, and the physicality of it is just a manifestation of, what, of that soul's experience and what it needs to experience and how it needs to experience life which tells you that on a cosmic scale, even the planets, they may last billions of years, but there's still a life, there's still a soul that's experiencing life from a different perspective. And that should blow you the fuck away. Because it means that everything has life in it to experience life from different perspectives of life. Imagine if you were the earth and how you are experiencing life and what similarities we have between us and the earth and what we experience intoxicating ourselves doing self-harm making choices that are overindulgent and out of balance this is about rebalancing ourselves getting back to actual health insight hitting us hard today Hitting us hard. You are or are about to see further, higher, and deeper through space and time. Your psychic skills are expanding and seeing through the lens of your soul. Hone your abilities by reading about or doing a workshop on intuitive development. We are all psychic. It is a part of who we are, but we have thrust this ability into the background in favor of other senses. Problems occur when we keep looking at the manifested world for proof of our worth. You are worthy because you are here. There is nothing to prove. You could become an intuitive reader if this is something you desire. Um, I'm sorry. 
It could also mean you are learning to trust what you feel and in the next steps to take and the next steps to take will drop into your mind in the following days. Like this is what's happening. This is what's happening. Insights onto into how to get back to that truth. Right? Our connection to the truth. Um joy. You see it? Discover what you love. If a thought does not give you joy, then search for one that does. Thank that thought for showing you where you don't feel joyful and then reach for a pleasing thought. You can empower yourself by choosing joyful thoughts. You will disempower yourself by choosing sad thoughts. What will you choose today? There is almost always something to make you feel at ease in every situation. It is up to you to find that. Try reaching for a joyous thought right now. Look around your house at what gives you joy. Turn toward the joy in your life. If you can't find it outside, go within and create inner joy. It is not always, I'm sorry, it is not always the easiest thing to do. However, it is one of the most worthwhile things you can do for your physical and mental well-being. Open your heart to allow blissful inspiration to direct your actions and you will give without expectation. Joy is your natural state of being. Now is the time to honor it. And no, that is not to say there is no pain and suffering in life. But that is to say that we have access to what makes life worth living. Every day, right inside of us. I'm so glad we're having this conversation. Let's get into the angel messages and then I'm going to let you guys go to enjoy your weekend. you could come out to healing everything 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 healing angel at this moment you are being bathed in gold pink and deep green light accept this healing we your angels surround you with wings of love you are eternally free eternally fresh and eternally abundant protection you are safe do not fear. We are with you always and surround you always with our invisible wings of light. The angels want you to be happy. They want you here. Gratitude. Make gratitude your new attitude. Say three things you are grateful for right now. Thank you, God, for my son. Thank you, God, for my home. Thank you, God, for the sun coming out. Thank you, God, for the money in my banking account and the money coming in, for my bills being paid, my taxes being paid. Thank you, God, for my dog who always makes me smile. Thank, like, I can't stop. Once I start, I cannot stop. I will always find something to say thank you for. Get into that mindset. Do it. I just did it in front of you. You can definitely do it in the privacy of your own home. Make gratitude your new attitude. The stars will shine brighter upon you. All in your world will become lighter. Lighter, not lighter as in, yeah, lighter as in ways less, but like lighter as in, lighter as in brighter. Inspiration. A new idea comes to you like a gentle whisper inside your heart. Listen and take action. This is inspiration from high above. Love. The heart of love is the heart of creation. All is possible through love. All is worthwhile for love. May all you think and feel reflect love's eternal truth. Hmm. heart and soul when making your decision take into account what your heart and soul are saying sometimes the mind can deceive us choose through love 
which is connectivity, not fear. Go ahead, go on, shine bright, and enjoy your lovely weekend. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Um, can we be best friends? <laughs> oh, are you, in, you said you're in Ireland? What's up, Ireland? Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much, Trish, I agree. Yeah, Earth is a living place. Yeah, there is an abstract part of the Earth. Um, Loker we have, and we belong to Earth and Earth to the solar system, etc. Okay, so I love that you guys are talking to each other and sharing wisdom and knowledge with each other. That's one of the best things about the lives is that you can interact with not just me, with everybody else. So I want to say thank you, and I hope you enjoyed yourself, and I really hope that your weekend is 10 times as good as this conversation. I love you all. Go have a beautiful, awakening, and pleasurable weekend. And I'll see you on Monday. Bye, guys. Oh, and please do check out Astrology Motivation. Subscribe. Um, check out Born Without Boundaries Tarot. Subscribe. And your weekly astrology forecast for this huge fucking week is going to be up Saturday at 6 a.m. Pacific time. So it'll reach you guys on the East Coast at 9 a.m. You should, none of you are probably up at that point on a Saturday, but whatever. I love you. Watch it when you're ready, but please do watch it, like it, and share it. I'll see you guys next week.